Again, now the Commission of Inquiry into State Capture will continue today in Parktown. Uh, it will hear testimony from former Minister of Labor, Mildred Oliphant, and her former Minister of Public Service and Administration, Richard Baloi. The Commission is investigating allegations of state capture and corruption, fraud, and other allegations in the public sector, including organs of state. For more on this, we're joined by our colleague, Mangoba Mkunu. Uh, Two ministers, two former ministers in one day. Uh, what sort of uh, direction will this conversation be taking? Uh, it's not the first time just really, uh, we've seen a minister come on board. You recall that in the past week or so, we've seen uh, two ministers come before that commission. The first one being uh, the former international relations minister, Maite Nguane Mashabani, who was going to testify, of course, on uh, the whole saga of uh, the landing of the plane. Is it starting to feel like plane. a cabinet You know, it's, it's starting somehow <laughs> to feel like a cabinet lechuta. But of course, the chairperson has uh, greatly appreciated uh, the ministers coming forward. And the former DGs, in fact, he... Sometimes that's where the question, the know, answers yes, lie. It goes to lens to try and you know express how grateful he is when they come to the state capture commission because these are the people really who were at the heart. They were seen as the enforcers, you know of the state capture yeah. uh, you know, uh, project by the Guptas. Of course, you'll know that they use their influence uh, and their friendship with the president to exert pressure on some of these ministers to either give them contracts or to either give them business uh, with government. So these are key people who would have been witnesses or would have been pressured in one way or the other in, or, uh, by the Gupta family to give business. So it's interesting that we have another minister coming on board, uh, in fact, two ministers coming on board. And this yeah. time, it's Mildred Oliphant, the former Labour minister. And of course, she's going to testify uh, with uh, regards to the issue of um, Zwanele Mani, who is considered to be a known uh, Gupta stooge, for a lack of a better word. Uh, of course, he you recall that there are various allegations about Mani. He was uh, 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 suspended, or he says suspended, but he was uh, fired uh, by uh, the then uh, Labour Minister in 2010, Member Tissim uh, you know, for apparently trying to solicit business with diplomats, foreign diplomats. And uh, the allegation is that, uh, you know, after he was fired, that's when a cabinet reshuffle happened, removing Member Tissim Jajana and replacing him with uh, Mildred Oliphant. And of course, under Mildred Oliphant, she says that a few weeks after, you know, she had taken the job, Zwanele Mani had called her and informed her uh, that, you know, he planned to challenge his decision by the department. And uh, in, in fact, that he plans to go as far as court. Yeah. So he says that at the time, what happened uh, a few weeks later, in fact, in January the following year, is that uh, uh, Mildred Oliphant then withdrew the, the, the suspension or the, 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 the withdrawal of um, the firing of Mzwanele uh, Mani uh, from the department. Uh, so ultimately bring him back into the fold. Yeah. And just a few days later, he was then moved to GCIS. And uh, Temba Maseko, who was then the head of GCIS, was moved to another department. We do understand it was the Department Public of Service. Public Services and yeah. Administration, in which uh, uh, the then former minister Richard Maloy was head of. And of course, from the testimony of Tema Masego So we're connecting himself, the dots here. We're connecting the dots here. Yeah. From the testimony of Tema Masego himself, he says that, you know, when he moved to that department, the, 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 the whole transition was not smooth. It was not, it seems as if he was not welcome there. He did not have a good relationship. He did not see eye to eye with the minister. It was as if, you know, the minister had not approved of the move. And of course, he says he was left out of meetings. There were important decisions that were taken without him, you know, in his absence. So that whole transition and how Mzwanele Mani then ended up at GCIS will be interesting to hear what happened there. And if there was any pressure and who that pressure had come from, from Mzwanele Mani to be moved there. Of course, this is when it comes at a time when the Guptas, remember Tima Masego, the Guptas had phoned him and asked him uh, to help them with the 600 million rand uh, advertising for the new age. And uh, it's a time where Masego also testified that uh, the former president, Jacob Zuma, had called him to say, please assist the Guptas. And of course, after he refused to do that, he says he was moved from the Department of Labor and, uh, I mean, moved from the GCIS, ultimately moved to the Department of uh, uh, Public Service and, uh, and Administration. So it's a time when we connect the dots uh, properly, Desiree, it's a time where the Guptas were really at their height in terms of their activities within government. You recall the evidence that we heard from, uh, uh, you know, the, the previous witnesses, Moshek, who says that by 2010, that's when they, even the intelligence started seeing the influence of the Guptas. That's when they started re realizing that the Guptas were actually a threat to the security of the state. And that's why the red flags were raised from the intelligence point of view with regards to the Guptas. So this is at the height of that period, 2010, 2011, when these, all, uh, when these maneuvers were made within the 
the departments. Yeah. Okay, so what time do proceedings start? Well, we do expect the proceedings to start at 10 a.m. this morning. And, of course, we do expect uh, the former Labour Minister to be the first on the stand. And Richard uh, Baloyi will follow. Of course, he will clarify more than anything what happened, why, uh, uh, you know, there was seemingly sort of like a purge of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Temba Masego when he arrived at that department and yeah. whether there were any pressures that were exerted on any of them to actually approve this transfer. Does that little issue, you know, they say, get December, boss. <laughs> Do we know uh, how far the State uh, Capture Commission is going to be running for in this month? Well, the indication the, uh, um, was that it could well run up until the 15th of December or, you know, the weekend, uh, the, the, the Friday before that uh, big holiday of the 16th. So it's likely that it's going to go uh, ahead until then, but, you know, and there are surprises there, yeah. you know, sometimes you find that there are witnesses that uh, who, are you know, willing, suddenly. who are willing to come yeah. and, uh, you know, the, the deputy chief justice, you know, he's so contempt on getting this thing, you know, done on going ahead with the work. So at times that's why we've been set on Saturday. So yeah. we could, we're expecting it to finish on the 13th. We're hoping it will finish on the 13th, but, anything but uh, you know, happen. anything could happen. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mangova. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll go through to the State Capture Commission as soon as proceedings begin there.